Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is Worth the Risk, Part 17, Panties. Raven stared at the tiny flowers in Natalie's garden. Drops of rain still glistened on the petals. Judging by the weathered look of the small patch of grass, the storm had been a godsend for the garden. Smiling, Raven shifted her focus on the water across the street. Natalie's house had a nice view. It was a pleasant place overall, really. Small, but cozy. The home also gave Raven a good idea of what Natalie was like. There was the old racing bike propped against the wall an assortment of sneakers under the small table near the front door. The couch had obviously not been a recent purchase, but it was stylish and comfortable. I really don't want to leave, Raven thought. Upstairs, the toilet flushed. She took in a slow breath. She had told Natalie she would take care of the plane ticket tonight and leave later in the week, but she wasn't sure that she still could reverse the new booking. Raven wrinkled her nose, aware that she needed to step back into reality today. She had enjoyed the night with Natalie so much, but it was over now. She would have to go back to the hotel at some point. She hadn't brought anything to Natalie's place. Raven needed clean underwear and a toothbrush. She also wanted her own moisturizer, even though Natalie happened to have shea butter. There was also the issue of Natalie working for Bart. Raven would have to tell Natalie why she had wanted to leave as soon as possible, that she didn't want anything to do with Bart anymore. It might put Natalie in a difficult position. Natalie hurried down the stairs and Raven turned around to face her. Better? she asked. So much better. Natalie smiled back. I'm surprised my bladder didn't explode. Raven <laughs> chuckled. Hey, I'm hungry, aren't you? Natalie asked patting her stomach. Starving, Raven said. The only thing open at this hour is bakeries, Natalie said. There's one about ten minutes away from here. Pastries? Raven asked, her mood instantly better. Or bread? Natalie said, amused. Raven shook her head vehemently. Mm, I need the pastries. Natalie laughed. <laughs> okay, do you want to get them together or... Looking down at her shorts and shirts, Raven hesitated. I don't know. I'm feeling kind of naked, she admitted. Naked? You're wearing clothes, Natalie commented, scratching her upper arm. Raven tugged at the shorts, feeling her cheeks flush. Yeah, but nothing underneath? Yesterday, after taking the shower, she hadn't been eager to put her underwear back on. Natalie's eyes widened. Right. I've meant to ask if I can perhaps buy some underwear from you, Raven said, a little sheepishly. Buy? <laughs> Natalie laughed. Yeah, Raven replied, shuffling her feet. I can't really wash it before giving it back, can I? Same for the shorts. Natalie's lips parted in surprise. Okay, she chortled, her eyes sparkling with amusement. You know what? I think I have some new underwear lying around. You can have it. Raven fidgeted with her hair. Thanks, but I really want to. No, Natalie interrupted her. You buy the pastries. Very well, Raven relented after a moment. We have a deal. Do you want to shower before we go? Natalie asked. Nah, Raven said, appreciating the offer. I'm too hungry. Can I do that after breakfast? Natalie nodded in agreement. It's a plan. Raven met Natalie's eyes and smiled. Natalie took a step toward her, leaning in and kissing Raven without hesitation. It was a sweet, tender kiss. Natalie's hand brushed over Raven's back, stopping just above her shorts. Raven's pulse quickened with longing. She wanted Natalie to slip that hand under the waistband of her shorts and explore what was below. She pressed closer, eager to feel Natalie's chest against hers. Natalie captured Raven's mouth for another mind-blowing kiss, their tongues teasing and probing. Raven's legs were shaking now, 
but she wasn't sure why. They stumbled toward the wall. Raven cupped Natalie's face and deepened the kiss even further. Natalie clung to her, pulling her closer and increasing the pressure between Raven's thighs. Their breathing became louder, coming in sighs and moans. When Raven started to explore Natalie's neck, Natalie threw her head back and bumped it into the wall quite loudly. Raven startled, leaning back to see if Natalie was okay. Natalie giggled. <laughs> I'm fine. A little lightheaded, though. Raven frowned. You should sit down. What if you have a concussion? <laughs> I don't have a concussion, Natalie said, her breathing still rapid. I've been, I've been lightheaded ever since you first kissed me. Raven gave her a long look. Okay, she said, a slow smile spreading across her face. Maybe we really should get those pastries. Nodding, Natalie tucked some hair behind her ear. Yes, I think I'll faint if we don't. Can't have that, Raven said, entwining her fingers with Natalie's. And we should talk, too. Natalie nodded with a forced smile. Had she hurt herself more than she was admitting? Or was it because Raven had said they needed to talk? Raven felt bad, but she didn't want to go any further until Natalie knew everything. All right, let me find you that underwear, Natalie said and pushed off the wall. Yes, let's put on some panties and go, Raven said. I was hoping we would take them off. Now put them on, Natalie joked. Raven gasped in surprise. Look at you. Very straightforward. Natalie arched an eyebrow, leaning toward Raven again. Yes, I know what I want. Is that a problem? Raven pressed her cheek against Natalie's and let out a shaky sigh. I like you way too much, she whispered. I like you way too much too, Natalie replied. A loud grumbling rose up between them. Raven wasn't sure whose stomach was complaining. They both laughed. Let's get going, Raven said. Raven rubbed her upper arms. Dang, it's a lot colder than yesterday. Natalie surprised her by running a hand over her back for everyone to see. Yeah, I should have given you a sweater, she said. I'm fine, Raven replied, pressing a little closer to Natalie now. Natalie wrapped her arm around Raven's waist. But I can keep you warm. Raven grinned. I definitely don't want a sweater then. They walked in silence for a minute, their shoulders brushing and Natalie's hand resting on Raven's side. Raven enjoyed this public intimacy immensely, but felt a little self-conscious at the same time. Were people watching them, she wondered? Hey, what did you want to talk about? Natalie asked. Raven's eyes focused on the sidewalk. Right, um, she said. She wished she could just enjoy the walk for a bit longer, but she knew she couldn't put this conversation off any longer. Look, I did ask the airline to get me back home as soon as possible, she started. Natalie stiffened a little, but she didn't move her hand away. Why? she asked. I came here to have meetings with Bart all week, Raven continued, her voice a little shaky. She was still embarrassed about being stood up. When he cancelled, <laughs> I figured there was no point in staying. Natalie was quiet for a moment before she asked, but why not just enjoy the city for a few days? It was a reasonable question, Raven knew, but she still clenched her jaw a little. I just didn't feel like doing that alone. But you're not alone, Natalie replied. Raven glanced to the side. Natalie looked at her with so much hope and kindness. Raven sighed and admitted, But I felt alone. I felt like a fool, to be honest. Natalie stopped walking, reaching for Raven's hand. I'm sorry, she said. Bart is an asshole. My sister said I was crazy to come here, Raven continued, her throat tight. She said that flying across the ocean in the middle of a pandemic to meet some guy who sold me his crazy idea was naive and an unnecessary risk to my health. 
I don't want to admit she was right. She cleared her throat and stared at a passerby across the road. You don't know, Bart. You don't know what he's like, Natalie said. He's very good at hiding it at first. I didn't see it either. Hiding it? Raven asked, focusing back on Natalie. What do you mean? Natalie's eyes darted around. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but Bart is a really lousy boss. <laughs> no kidding, Raven snorted, but then thought she might come off a little harsh. I mean, she corrected herself, stroking Natalie's hand. I did get a sense that things are not the way Bart made them seem to be. I feel bad, though, Natalie said. Because Lifty really is a good product and we need the investments. I think jobs depend on it. You're afraid to lose your job? Raven frowned. No, Natalie said, shaking her head. I think I'm going to quit, to be honest. Raven's eyebrows shot up. You're quitting? Natalie grabbed her hands with both of hers. Don't tell anyone. Bart would kill me if he found out I told you this. Oh, don't worry, Raven said. All Bart will hear from me is that he can shove his proposal where the sun doesn't shine. Yeah, yeah, I feared, Natalie giggled. I can't blame you. I'm sorry if this puts you in a difficult position, Raven said. Natalie tilted her head. Because you don't want me to tell Bart the deal is dead? Raven nodded. Fair enough, Natalie said after a moment. I guess we're both over him. Do you think we can avoid him for the rest of the week? Raven asked, only half joking. It looks like he's been avoiding us, Natalie replied. So I think that shouldn't be a problem. Raven chewed on the inside of her lip before saying, I'd love to see a lot of you, though. Natalie grinned, lifting Raven's hand to her lips. Hey, I'm not the one who has a plane ticket tonight. Raven groaned. Mmm, I'm going to fix that. Breakfast first, though, Natalie said and nodded toward the street. The bakery's over there. Raven straightened. Yes, give me something to eat, she joked. Natalie laughed and pulled her along. <laughs> I can do that. This was part 17 of Worth the Risk. Thank you so much to all the listeners around the world who have supported the creation of this episode. This is a listener-funded show, and it is because of your support that I can keep going, so thank you. A special thank you to all the recurring supporters on my website and Patreon. Because of your recurring support, I can plan my work and know that I can release the next episode and the one after that. So let me thank you personally. I love doing this, by the way. So here we go. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Thea. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Sabriel. Thank you, Adasha. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Charlie is a good boy. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much, Marina. Thank you, Bruna. And thank you, Christy. Super dikke merci. That's a super thank you in Dutch. Bob. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Elle. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Sven. Valerie. Kat. And Sharon. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Brie. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, The Dash. Merci, Ariana. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Marie-Hélène. Thank you, Patricia and Ashley. Annie. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Macy. Thank you, Amber. And thank you, Delisa. Ooh, that was fun. Thank you so much. If you could see me, I'm like, you know, doing thank you signs with my hands and just feeling all <sighs> happy and grateful. If you are a recurring supporter and you didn't hear your name, that's probably because you're supporting me through the website. And I didn't want to assume that you're okay with me listing your name uh, in the podcast. So just let me know that it's okay so that I can thank you personally the next time. All right, that was all for this episode. 
I am so grateful that you spent this time with me, and I hope to see you soon in the next episode on Keybase, on the website, on Patreon, wherever. I'd love to get in touch. So see you soon. Bye. Raven pressed her cheek against Natalie's and let out a shaky sh- shy. <laughs> She said that flying across the ocean in the middle of a pandemic to meet some guy who sold me his crazy idea was naive and an unnecessary. All Bart will hear from me is that he can shove his proposal where the sun doesn't.